In my last video, I took a look at this server, which is going to become a new home server. Although technically at the point of filming this, I haven't finished the last video, so yeah, there's going to be a bit of time travel here. But yeah, this is going to be my new home server. But what I've got to do now is migrate all the data from my old server to the new one, and it's going to get quite tricky, as I'll explain. So we're going to have some super fun raid times trying to migrate all the data without losing everything. Hooray! So what happened, the way it all works is this new server has a pair of 1TB hard drives in it that it came with. My old server also has a pair of 1TB hard drives. What I want to have in the end is the new server to have, a, have four 1TB hard drives in a RAID 1.0 array to give 2TB of total storage. However, I want to be able to do this without losing all the data that's on here and without having to copy it to various places and try and manage all that. So what I'm going to try and do, well, I should be able to do it, is copy, is take one of the hard drives from here Put it into the server. I'll then install the OS as a, creating a degraded RAID 1.0 array, so a RAID 1.0 array with one disk missing. Set it all up, copy all the data from this server to this one, put the disk that's in here, in here, and then rebuild the array so it'll have all four disks without losing the data. Now I will say, obviously, you do need to back the stuff up. I do have a backup of all my most important files on this hard drive, as well as a couple other ones in various places, but I don't want to have to be relying on backup hard drives file permissions might not have copied over and stuff, so I'd rather copy from the original server, which is why I'm doing this, but yeah, also make sure you take a backup, yeah, yeah. don't risk without not backing up. So yeah, we're going to do this, so here's the old server, so I'm going to remove one of the hard drives from it. So I'm going to take this one out, which is one of the one terabyte Seagate Barracudas it has, and then leaving the other one in there. So because this machine ran a RAID 1 array, which is all done in software, this machine should still boot. If I plug this in, it will still boot up and it will run the OS. In fact, I'll do that now just to illustrate that while I install this controller machine. So we put that in there and make sure it's on the back. Yep, so that machine's coming on and you should see the hard drive light. It will, you know, boot up and give us disk, disk activity. And we'll probably monitor it as well. Why not? And we should see the old server will boot up on the TV. There we go. So, even though I've pulled out the backup hard drive, well, one of the redundant hard drives, you can see it's still booting up into its operating system, which is just Debian 7, I think, on this machine. It's not been updated in a long time. So, I've got the hard drive, and I've unscrewed it, so it'll come out of the caddy, like that. So now we have this new hard drive. So what I'll do is I'll put it into the new server. So what we'll do is we'll take this new server and bring it around. And actually, I really like how the disks fit in this. You take the side off, Totally screw it's all screwless. That comes off. And what we have here is where the new hard drives are going to go. So we're going to put this drive in here, and then we'll leave this space for the second hard drive when we come to put that in. And also just to add, the machine has just booted there and that's sitting at a login prompt. So this machine is actually working. So I can still copy my files off it. So I'm just going to shut it down just now. Um, but yeah, that has worked. So what I'll now do is we can take the drive slides out, which just pop out like that. Just pull them and they sort of come out and these are going to go into the new hard drives. So to put the new hard drive in is actually really nice, we just basically put it against the side of the disk like that, line up the three holes and that goes on there. Do the same for the other side like that and then sort of while holding them slide it into the machine. And there we go, so that's fitted. Connect the power cable and then the data cables are down here in this little clip. I'm just going to sort of try and prise it open without breaking my fingernail. Come on, stop off. No. Nope. Okay, I'm going to use a something just to so don't break my fingernail trying to unclip this. There we go, that unclips. That was fairly easy. Um, and we take the cable out. So we take a SATA cable out, I'll clip that back down just now. And then we put SATA cable in there. So that's that new drive connected to this machine. So we can now put the side back on and get Debian installed. And we're now ready to set this up. So the first thing we're going to we're going to use two different tools here. I'm going to use gpartes to do partition editing, and then I'm going to use just Debian 8. I'm going to be installing Debian 8 on this machine. What, and once I've installed Debian, I'll then install the Proxmox VE hypervisor on it to allow me to run virtual machines. So the first thing we're going to do is use gpartes and clear out the disks so the old so all the disks are totally blank and ready to be worked with. So we'll power the machine on. Put the CD in it, and we'll. Put up into that.
So here we are now booted up into Gparted. So this is a common Linux partition editor, it's you know, commonplace. This is a live CD version, which is a Debian live CD, works really well. So here we can see it. So what we can see here is SDA is totally unallocated. This is one of the new disks, as is SDB. If we go into SDC, we can see there's the partition table from the old machine. I don't know why this is reporting NTFS. The old machine was definitely EXT, but meh, don't know why. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the device menu and go to create partition table. And this will create an MS-DOS partition table, that's fine. If it was a bigger disk, you might need to play out with the GPT, but just using MS-DOS here. And we'll apply that. So that's now created an un another unallocated disk. So all these disks are now sitting here unallocated. So I now need to partition these. However, I'll be doing that in the Debian installer just to be safe. So we can now close out of this and reboot the system. So I'm just going to reboot here. And then I'll put the Debian, Debian installer seed, uh, DVD in the machine, and then I'll reboot into that, and, once, and I'll come back once I've booted into the installer. Okay, so here I am in the Debian installer, so now I'm just going to run through that. Pick the language, pick the wrong language because I didn't read what I was doing. There we go. I'm going to leave it to do this. Okay, so I've now gone through, just put the password and set up some users, connected it to the network, put the host name and things in. So now we're ready to have the fun with partitioning, because this is when it gets really tricky for what we're trying to do here. So first of all, we have to go into manual, we can't do this automatically. And what we now see is here's our three hard drives um, that we're going to create the array on. So what we need to do is, for Proxmox VE, we want to use LVM to hold most of the stuff. However, we need to have a separate non-LVM boot partition. So what's going to happen is we need to create two different RAID arrays across the devices, one to hold boot and one to hold LVM. So on each disk, I'm going to create the partitions. So we're going to go in here, create a new partition. So I'm going to do the boot one first, which is just going to be 256 megabyte. It doesn't need to be big. Primary, beginning, and we want to say that this is a physical volume for, for a RAID. And make sure we set it as bootable, because it's a boot partition. And say done. So we need to do this to all the other, all the other drives. Okay, so I need to do the same for this. So I need to create an array in here for the LVM. So, again, create our partition, make sure it's primary for RAID. This one does not need to be bootable because it's not a bootable partition, and we do that. And again, do the same to all the others. Okay, so that is done. So what we now need to do is write all these partition changes to disk. Unfortunately, the Debian installer, will, while it will allow us to create a RAID array, it won't allow us to create one with, with missing disks in it. You have to pick all the disks. So we can't actually use the Debian installer to create our array. We have to do that on the command line. But because currently these partition changes haven't been written to disk, and if we go down here, it won't let us, it'll just complain saying we, we've not set up partitions. So a sort of trick I found is to go up to say that you want to configure software arrays, and it'll say, do you want to write these changes to disk? So press yes to that, and that will now have written the partition changes to disk. We can't create RAID devices in here as I said, so we just need to finish and go out with that. And then I went down here and went to go back. So now I'm sitting on this menu where it just says detect disks and it's giving me all the options. So what I'm now going to do is press Control alt f 2 and that will take me into text terminal. So I press enter here, we're now at the text terminal and the camera has decided that it doesn't want to focus on text terminals because it is useless. So now we need to create the two arrays. So if we do f dash dash l, we can see here we have all of our array, all of our devices we have currently. So we see we have, it, so we can see sort of, I'll come up and move the points it. So on the left here, we have SDB, SDA, and SDC, each with two partitions. SD, SD1, the ones that end in a 1, are going to be the boot partition, as you can see it's 243 megabytes. The ones that end in a 2 are going to be our data partition with the LVM on it, and as you can see, these are closer to a terabyte. So what we're now needing to do is create two different RAID arrays, where we're going to create a RAID 01 of all the first partition on each disk, and then a separate one of all the second partition on each disk. So how we're going to do that? Well, I'll do that now. So, mdadm is the command we're going to be using to create these. Verbose and create. And we want to create dev md0. md0 will be where our boot partition goes. So that means what needs to happen, where we first need to specify out how many devices are we are. So, raid devices equals four. So we're going to say there's four devices. There is only three physical disks in the machine, but when I finish rebuilding the array and put the other disk in, there will be four devices. Then we need to specify our devices. So it's going to be dev sda1, dev sda, sdb1, 
div SDC one. So that's saying we want to use the first partition from each disk, which, as you can see, is the ones we want to have in this array. But we said there's four devices. So what we need to do here is put missing. That's the key word. That's saying we're building an array of four devices. Here's the first three. The last one's missing. And if we press enter there, ah, forgot about that. Uh, you also need to specify array level. That would have been that makes sense. So I specified level equals RAID 10. So now if we run that, boom. That has now created the array as you can see. I'm going to do the same. Oh, sorry, it's not giving me an error. Uh, that's fine, it's more about the partition table existing, so I'm just going to go yes. And you see, that has created the array. So now we're going to need to do the same for the second set of drives. Second set of partitions to hold the LVM. So I'm going to change all these to the second partition, so SDA1, SDB1, SDA2, SDB2, and SDC2. And we want to change this to create um, dev MD1. So hit enter on that. Again, say yes to that. And as you see, that has now created the arrays. So now, if I cat proc MD stat, which holds the data about these, we can see this output. So what you can see here is we have our, our two RAID devices that have been created. And as you can see here, they are active in RAID 1.0 and this is listing the devices that are in it. However, what you'll find here, it's saying that there's three out of four disks in the array, and then U means a disk working correctly, and the underscore means it's missing. So you can see we have three existing disks and one that's missing. And this is the same in both each array. However, these arrays are now created, and they're just degraded for redundancy. It's also important to make sure you put the missing in the right position, so put it last. That means we'll create the stripe, and we'll create one mirror, and we'll just be missing one mirror. So currently there's no redundancy here, but it still will allow us to install set the system. So now we've actually created these arrays, we can go back to Debian installer. So to do that, just do Control Alt F1, and that will take us back here. So I'm just going to hit Detect Disks again, and that will let the installer go through and find those disks. And this time we'll detect the new array we created, as you can see there. So as you can see here, we now have this 500 meg partition, and this is going to be where our boot goes. And here we have the 2 terabyte one, which is where our LVM is going to go. So we just simply start doing that. So Select this, make it ext4, and the mount points to be boot. So we've done that. Now here, we're going to do LVM. So, use as, physical volume for LVM, done. Okay, so now you just run away and figure out the size of the partitions I'm going to need. So what I need uh, for Proxmox, this is going to be specific to installing Proxmox VE, I want my root partition to be about 20 gigs, I want about an 8 gig or so swap partition, and then I want to have the rest of the disks, so most of the two terabytes, as my Proxmox VE data partition, which is where all the VMs are stored. If you're doing this just for raw Debian or other Linux distro install, you probably want to have you know, most of that on your root or have a separate home partition, so you need to figure the partitioning out yourself. But this will all, all be created in the LVN. So the first thing we need to do is go to Configure Logical Volume Manager and create a volume group. I'm calling mine PVE, which is the what conversion for Proxmox VE, but you can call that what you want. Now it's asking to pick what disk. So I want to do it to dev MD1, which is the 2 terabyte RAID array that we just created. So now I've created the volume group, we now need to create some logical volumes. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to be my, be my data one for Proxmox, and that's going to be 1970956 megabyte. You can tell I'm reading that off a post it note. And then create another one. And it's going to be 204840 megabyte. Nope, that's the name. Uh, so it's going to be root, and then 204840 megabyte. And then we put the final one, which is going to be our swap partition. That's, that came out quite close, only a few megabytes off of 8 gigs, but that's fine. And then we can just create that. So that's created all of our logical volumes. So we now go to finish, and it'll take us back to partitioner. So here we can see each of our volumes. The 2 terabyte that's going to be Proxmox VE's data, the root partition, which is 20 gig, and our swap partition. So now we need to create the mount points and format these. So Proxmox VE root, ext4, and we mount this on a special directory, which is going to be var lib vz. Done. The root partition, again, is going to be ext4, and it's just going to mount on the root. And then we have the swap partition, which we just use as a swap area. Done. And yet we have the, so now you can see the partition layout we finally finished up with, where we have our boot partition on the one RAID array, 
the other RAID device having the LVM and in the LVM we have our root partition, our proximal VA data partition and our swap partition. So that's all the disks laid out. So now we can go down here and go to finish partitioning and write changes to disk. Hit that. So you want to write changes to disk. And there we go. So that's now formatting. The disks are rumbling away. The disks on the server are quite loud, um, but they're fine. And that's now installing the system. So we'll come back at the end of the installer. Okay, so the installation is now complete. It's I've filled in a bunch of stuff about packages and it's finished installing. So um, it's now asking what I want to do for a grub. So we want to say we want to install it to master boot record. And we're going to pick to do it on dev SDA. You can then manually install grub to all the other disks later. So we click that, make that run. That's how we install grub to the disk. Running update grub. And there we go, now it's finishing the installation. So we just leave that, it'll only take a few seconds to do this bit. And then once that's done, we should be able to reboot into the new system, install Grub to the rest of the disks, and then it'll be done. Cool, so that's the CD pop out machine. Gonna hit enter, and it's gonna now reboot. So hopefully it hurries up because the camera's about to run out of, ba run out of battery. Um, Yeah, so hopefully the machine boots this time. We're not having any problems with it not booting because, like, I have tried this before and it, I, I was I spent quite a while sitting in virtual machines trying to get this sort of setup to work just to be sure it would work, and there were so many issues I had. Of course, there you go. You can see there's a Grub bootloader popped up. Uh, camera's going to refuse to focus on it, but yeah, we've got Grub and now it's going to boot. So it started the raid arrays. So it started with three devices out of four, which is what we'd expect. And there we are. We're in the machine. Oh no, we're not. But also the camera's going to focus, but. We're in if the camera would ever work. There we go. So now if we log in, there we are. I'm going to do grub hyphen install dev sdb. And that's going to install grub and sdb. This will just ensure that the master boot record on all the drives in the machine um, have Grub installed. This means that if one drive fails, we'll still be able to boot the system. Otherwise, if Grub was on, say, SDA and that drive failed, there would be no drives with working Grub. So this just means we've got that redundancy in the bootloader as well. So there we go, that's Grub installed. And now if we less proc MD stat, we can then see here, there is our RAID array. And this is, as you can see there, it looks fine. It's got the three out of four devices in it and yeah it all appears fine so there we go that's the system installed I can now go away and install Proxmox VE um, but what I'll be doing next is I'll be taking the it'll be copying all the data from the old server to the new one and I'll then be once that's all done and everything's backed up and definitely stored in the new server fine I'll then copy I'll then take the hard drive out the old server put it into the new one as a fourth disk add it to the RAID array and everything will be good So there you have it, the hard drives have always set up in the new servers, the new server works great um, and my data is all able to be copied over so yeah that's gone fantastically. So thanks for watching, don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe and you can also visit my website at CameronGray.me and follow me on Twitter at CameronGray1515. Thanks for watching.